Well, welcome to a tutorial on how to work with uh, brushes and creating some atmosphere to build drama in your images. And I'm going to give you a file of a background that I shot in England. And then I'm going to give you a file that has the brush so that you can download and follow along with me as I go through the tutorial. So downloading the brushes aren't that difficult. Uh, a lot of people have been emailing me saying, how do I go and build this drama that I've done in a bunch of my images over the years using atmosphere? So my whole goal here is to subtly bring in a little bit of atmosphere to the scene to just build some, some kind of some drama. So you gotta be careful you don't overdo this, but I build a lot of the stadiums that I photograph athletes, I put athletes in, or even if I photograph them on location, the lights usually aren't on. Some of the, the, the arenas that I've shot in, to turn the lights on, no joke, is like $5,000 for a, a half an hour photo shoot. So I go and build those lights and the drama after in Photoshop, and people wanna know how I do that. So um, you can find the links to the that image of this image that I've got here in England in the link below and also the brush that goes with it. Now, I have uh, built a over 200 brushes that I have made available for people. And so if you go to joelgrimes.com, and the reason why I say this, people keep asking me, you go over, let's go scroll down here to uh, the signature brushes here, and they're a special discount, not very much money, $27, but you get over 200 brushes, a lot of uh, that are for dramatic for uh, building the atmosphere, the, um, there's dust, I've got fog, I've got haze, I've got light rays, all sorts of stuff, even snow. So to download those, uh, there I'm also going to include a PDF with the, the links below that actually go through step by step if you're going into Lightroom or if you're a PC guy, I'm a Mac guy here. But it, to get your brushes into Photoshop are not that difficult. And so what I do very simply is go over here to, so I'm in my window here and I go down to brushes, which I've got set up right over here, click on brushes. And there's a little teeny, it looks like a bunch of little lines at the top here, um, top right. You click there and you say import brushes. And you go to the folder and you import them. And then they show up down here. So Joel's, uh, uh, let's see, uh, d dust, jewels, uh, atmosphere, all those down here are available for you to go at your fingertips and add to the drama in your pictures. So let's take a look. I'm going to go over layers here. This is the final image that I turned. I made it into black and white. I love black and white. But here's the original image that you're going to get. Um, it's just a, I don't remember the exact, it's in England. It's not a church, but it's like a concert hall or um, it's been in movies. You've seen this place. Walked in, I think I had a tripod. A lot of times they don't let you use a tripod in there, but it's not a big deal. We can handhold uh, cameras today at, with the uh, image stabilization pretty well. So I took out those little, the little, uh, there's some dark uh, square tiles there. I took those out. Kind of bothered me. So let's go and I'm going to show you just real quick step by step of what I did here. Whoops. Let's see. That's that's letting them all go at one time here. So let's go down here and I like to kind of show you my steps. So let's go. So here's the the front sort of light streaking through the windows. Uh, there's a little glow that I add to the windows. There's the background streaking, the, even one more, I think I did it in three layers. There is a little glow in the center, just like atmosphere, a little vignette. I turn it to black and white, add some levels to give it a snap, a gradient on the bottom, a gradient on the top. And then I go into Luminar and add a little bit of drama there. I'll show you how to do that. So let's go over here. Let's get rid of these three layers. Well, let's keep that one. So there's my base image right there. So, and I'm not going to use my Wacom tablet. I'm going to use uh, a laptop and show you how really how easy this is. So I'm going to go over to, well, I already have it here, my brush, so I have my layers and my, my layer palette and my brush palettes right here. Uh, 
So I'm going to go down and I'm going to pick the brush that I'm going to give you guys. It is the, let's see if I can get this up high enough here. It's the last, whoops, let's keep this straight here. It's the last one. Let me go over here and just make sure. It's under light rays, and I think it's this one right here, 46. So I click on it, and then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, just a little bit smaller so it'll show up here. All right. So that's how it looks like when you have the brush ready to go. Well, we don't want to click on that yet, so let's go back to layers. And I'm going to make a blank layer, so that's Shift-Command-N on the Mac. And we'll just call this a light, whoops, raise one. Okay, so that'll be our front one. And then I haven't done anything yet, and I'm going to set my opacity. Um, you can go up to 100% and then later lower the opacity. But I think I usually, let's just say for this, we're going to go at 50%. Let's just say that and we'll see how it works. So what I do is I line it up, but it's not, I don't have to be perfect lining it up right off the bat because I'm going to change the angle a little bit on this. We can change the angle of the brush in the uh, set over here in the brushes. We don't want to do that because I want to show you how to do it after the fact. So here we go. We're going to go click and that's on my blank layer. So there's the rays. Mm, looks Okay, looks pretty good, maybe not. So I'm gonna go Command Z. So let's actually raise the opacity a little bit because we're gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna have the ability to knock it down. So let's go to say 80-ish 80, 80 percent there. Okay, let's try it again. So that's a little more powerful, obviously overdoing it, but I think that looks about right in terms of coming from that window. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take and make a mask. So at the bottom down here, it says a layer mask. It's the third icon from the left. And we go, now there's the mask sitting there waiting for you to work with it. So we're going to go over here to gradient. We're going to go to the first one, which is the linear gradient. And we're going to pull from the window and follow down along the uh, direction of the rays. So let's say we go about there. Now, this is new to Photoshop. I can now slide along here and kind of feather the, the, uh, the effect um, after the fact, after I've already laid down my gradient. So that's a kind of a neat feature that Photoshop has. So I'm going to say, for now, I'm going to say right about there. Okay. Now, we're going to go back over here and just click and get off the selection. And let me hit Tab. So you can kind of see it. And I'm saying, you know what? That's not too bad. So let's go back over here and get my palette. We're going to do, we're going to do another one. But what we're going to do is we're going to take that layer. Now I can go use a brush again and reapply it, uh, start over. But I already have it built. Plus, let me just show you this. Command T, which is free transform, will allow me to, if I want to fine tune the angle. So let's just say we go right about there. Okay, so that's say, that's about right. We're going to hit return. Now I go command J, which duplicates that. Well, let's turn off the bottom sun rays and we'll go command T and we're going to make it a little smaller. So we just bring it down a little bit here. We're going to run it now behind. Let's angle it a little bit more here. Sometimes I'll flip it so it doesn't look like the same rays, but in this case, I don't think it's going to matter. So let's get it right about there. Now, if you if we zoom in, I'm going to hit return. You can see that I have not, if there's this column that it's sitting in front of, and you're like, mm, that doesn't look real. So we go over here to the mask. We go to my brush. We make a black brush, and we're going to say 100%. And I think what we need to do is make it smaller. So let's, oh, we got to go, sorry, a little too, too fast here. If I zoom in here, we're going to get, we, we have to get a round brush. And it can be, it can be a little bit, um, it can be a little bit, um, if we go here, say hardness is about 35%, something like that, okay? We're going to now paint so that the column doesn't have that brush. Let's go in and zoom in a little bit here. 
I want to make sure, let's make the brush a little smaller, that it's right along, just coming out of the window, not, not in the area of the column there. Let's make sure that's done there too. Okay, so now let's go back to my layers palette and we're going to turn on the front one. So we're getting a little bit of, com uh, you know, it's overlapping each other, but that's okay. Uh, for demo purposes, I just want to show you how I work and, and do, mul like in stadiums, I do multiple uh, layers of the same thing. So we're going to go and do it again. Command uh, J, Command T, and we're going to, that's three transform. Command J is the copy of the layer. Let's go back down here and we're going to hit return and turn off that layer in front. So let's go Command T again. Let's get it right in there. Since we've already done the mask to have a curve, it fits almost perfectly in there. Maybe what I do is angle it a little bit and come back and finish it off with a black brush. Let's go over here and then just clean it up just a little bit. Let me zoom in on that for you. Just make sure all that's cleaned up right there. All right, so let's bring it down. Now, what I want to do is I want to, I'm not done yet, so let's take a look at all three of these together. So they're kind of blending a little bit, but let's say we pull the front one down a little bit. And we pull the back one down, the middle one down a little bit. And just start looking at it and seeing if they kind of fit together. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we haven't sold the fake yet, so we're going to do Shift Command N, another blank layer. And this layer, I'm going to take a round brush, like I already have. We're going to go as soft as possible. We're going to make it a little bit bigger here. We're going to set the opacity to about 35%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blast, let's bring it over here, some light like it's coming through the window here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to do just a few more right there. That's how it would look probably more in real life. Then we're going to come along to this window. We're going to hit blast, blast, blast. And then we'll go down here and do this window. We want it to kind of like blow out a little bit. So it can bleed a little bit over or in front of the columns because it's just like kind of, you know, blasting around. Okay, and then we're going to make it really big here and blast one in the center. Actually, Command Z. Let's do that on a blank layer. Shift Command N because I want to I want to be able to, to be able to fine tune that one. So let's pull that down a little bit. Now. Let's go over here to Filter. We're going to go to Noise. We're going to add a 21. Look, it's already there from probably two months ago or whenever I did this. A 21 amount of noise to that blasting of that atmosphere. Now, we're going to apply it to Filter, the one raise in the back. We're going to, oh, that was the, the, sorry, the windows. Then we're going to apply it to the, all three of the rays. So what this does is it takes away a little bit of it being too perfect. Gives a little bit of bite. All right. I think that's looking pretty good. All right. So let's now finish this off the way I would do it. So the first thing I would do is go to my black and white. You don't have to go to black and white in this, but I love the drama of black and white. So there's black and white, and I can change my color palette over here, properties, has the ability to go and maybe fine tune this a little bit to build some, um, you're working with the color uh, sliders, but in black and white. So I'm gonna do that a little bit, but we're a little flat, so we're gonna go and make a levels adjustment, and we're gonna build a little contrast. Maybe we'll bring down the blacks just a tad. Oh, I love snappy black and whites. Let's bring the middle one down a little bit. And I didn't do a vignette. I should have done that. Um, I should have done that before this. All right, so let's go to a vignette. So we go to levels. This is how I do my vignette. I go to gradient and the second one over, which is the 
should be the circular or the, it doesn't tell me here, come on. You hover over it, it usually tells you. That's not gonna do that today. So um, we're gonna pull from the center. And then it's, the black is on the outside and the white is in the middle. We need to invert that. So command I inverts that. I'm gonna double, I'm gonna, not double click, but just click on the, I call it the little crown, but that gives, brings my pop properties up. And we're gonna pull that down just a little bit. Go back to my levels. And we're gonna, I went too far on the, on the uh, mid-tones on that. So uh, we're not done yet. I think that's looking pretty good. We might even push the, the blowout whites just a little bit more because I love the idea that the windows are almost, you know, blowing out. Even though I shot an HDR on this, um, you want the windows to look like they're blowing out. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, uh, another levels adjustment. And we're going to go back to my gradient. We're going to go to the first one, which is linear. And we're going to pull up from the bottom and click and then go to my properties and we're going to pull it down a little bit that'll bring your eye in we'll do it one more time at the top so levels i do this all the time it may be something that you you wouldn't do but i'm going to draw your eye to the center of the photo so we do it there click on the properties again pull the whoops pull the top down just a little bit i'm building a tunnel that takes you down the center of this photograph. So I think we're pretty we're pretty good. So let me hit tab and let's go up in here and take a look at this. Sorry, um, I kind of got off my screen there. <clears throat> I think that's pretty good. It looks pretty dramatic. I might pull back those rays a little bit. So let's go back to tab. Let's go. Um, whoops. Let's go to over here and make it a little smaller. And we now will go back and we'll say, okay, I went too far. Let's take the first one down a little bit. Let's go to 50%. Second one, let's go about 50%. And the third one, about 50%. So that looks a little more realistic. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's do this. We're going to finish this off for you guys. And we're going to go and make a blank layer at the top. Well, actually, it's not at the top now because because we've got a couple things, but at the top of what we just did. So I go Shift, Option, Command E gives me a stamp visible of everything below, which then allows me to go to Filter. I'm going to go down to Sky Loom, uh, uh, Luminar Neo. I use this. Uh, to kind of finish off my images a little bit. You can create some presets that make it a little bit faster. Oh, it wants me to update. I don't care about that right now. We're going to hit E, which is the edit. And then I'm going to scroll down here to mystical. And I'm going to go about 35, per, 35, I guess you'd call it amount, 35 amount. I don't touch the shadows or the smoothness. Then I go over to my details. We're going to add a, about a 20-ish snap, clean it up, and then let's go to structure and add just a fraction structure, not much. Develop. We're going to go smart contrast, about 25-ish. Highlights, we'll pull back just a fraction, just a little bit, and then open up the shadows just a, a tad right there. We're going to hit apply. And there you have my final image that I have uh, at least built for this um, let me hit tab here and center that up for you. So I think we did pretty good on that. And I'm going to show you the, the before and after. So let's go down one click here, show you. Here is, I have to do it this way. There is the before. And then there is the after. Quite a big difference. So, please download that um, that brush and the PDF and the background image and practice that. That I think the beauty of this is that you can take and go into. I wouldn't say this background was boring, but I'm adding a little bit more punch to the whole thing, and I like doing that because 
I would say that is a realistic scenario, meaning that that's possible that those rays, I've seen them in old churches and it just happens that the sun is in the right spot and there's maybe a little atmosphere in the church or whatever it is or stadium and then all of a sudden you get this really cool look. But it was overcast day when I went there. So I'm creating something that I would say is realistic, but as an artist, I have the freedom to go and build the vision that I have. And what I have is like a canvas, a blank canvas that I go and, and just make beautiful pictures. And so I think I have the freedom to do that. So I hope you do too. I hope you're encouraged by this. And um, check out the jewelgrimes.com uh, to get the full brushes if you're interested in that. And we'll see you again soon.